Hello, my name is Jonathan Callis. I'm a BDS member and my presentation today is to share my experience of undertaking dragonfly surveys over three years at Pennycook House Estate. I have been interested in Odonata for about 10 years now, initially starting with a bit of basic photography, but latterly I have also turned my hand to recording. Dragonflies have become a bit of an obsession. Wherever I go, I try to find them. Sometimes this can be quite far afield. The images to the bottom left were taken in Borneo and in Costa Rica. But the iRecord map of my activities to the right shows I have had a good rummage around a number of sites across the UK too. The location of today's talk is much closer to home and in Scotland. While weekends and holidays provide opportunities for dragonfly surveys, I am also very lucky that my employer, Network Rail, allows all staff to undertake five days paid volunteer leave to work with any UK charity. Working under the direction of Danielle and with encouragement from Andrea and Pat, I have made sure the BDS benefit from this great arrangement. Pennycook House Estate is situated in the east central belt of Scotland at the position of the red marker on the top right Google map and the circular red marker just below Edinburgh on the map below that. It is adjacent to the outskirts of the town of Pennycook that has a population of approximately 14,000 people. The main estate limits are shown shaded in purple in the centre of the map to the left. Pennycook is sited on main road and bus links from Edinburgh City, Midlothian and the borders. Due to its close proximity to Edinburgh and the many surrounding towns and villages, around 600,000 people live within a 10 mile radius. Pennycook estate can be readily accessed from multiple points within the town. Pennycook Estate dates back to 1654, when John Clark, a successful European art dealer, purchased the land. The very grand main house, pictured here, originally completed in 1773, was unfortunately gutted by fire in 1899 and was never renovated back to its original glory. Sir Robert Clark is the current estate owner and 11th baronet. The estate extends to roughly 7,500 acres in mixed land uses, including agriculture, forestry and outdoor pursuits. Management outside of this is focused around conservation of the main house ruin and restoration of the Historic Environment Scotland listed designed landscape. The vast majority of the land is also maintained for the benefit of the local community and visitors. There is, in normal non-COVID-19 times, a dedicated ranger service. The estate has generally free access for those on foot, bicycle or horse and is especially popular with dog walkers. There are a number of waymarked walks. My dog, as you can see, likes to get involved in dragonfly surveys. There is free visitor parking for approximately 20 cars. Some paths are impaired mobility friendly and there are two pre-bookable parking spaces at the main house. At the main house, in normal times and during core visitor hours, there are public toilets and a very nice, well-stocked coffee shop. My decision to commit to adopt Pennycook Estate as a survey site for three years was to help me build my ID and recording skills, plus hopefully add some useful data in a fairly under-recorded area of Scotland. I also know Pennycook Estate very well, as I grew up in the town spending many happy childhood days playing on and exploring it. I even worked there for a summer. To gain access to undertake serving as a BDS volunteer, I approached the ranger service who warmly welcomed my interest. They helpfully furnished me with their historical insect survey records. These dated from the early 1980s, most recently the early 2000s, with 10 species of Odonata recorded. Access could be taken any time, even on normally private areas of the estate. Their only condition was that I share the survey records with them. They also kindly took a box of BDS Scotland information leaflets for visitors to the ranger station and the cafe. Although there is much potential dragonfly habitat, many burns, a river and an extensive peat bog moor area too, I elected to concentrate my efforts on the obvious locations, the three main ponds on the central area of the estate that the red arrows are highlighting. This seemed manageable as I was, after all, compared to many long-standing BDS members, a relative beginner. So what are the three ponds like? And over 10 visits spread over three years, 2018, 2019 and 2020, what did I find? Did I find the 10 species on historic record? I will start with the high pond. I've recorded five species as present here. This is a large formal pond by the estate owner's home. It is a really lovely spot. 
It has no public access except by appointment or by joining a guided ranger wildlife walk. Helpfully though, for an intrepid surveyor, it has a wide level moan path the whole way around. This is the largest of the three ponds by some way, about 150 metres by 200 metres, covering approximately three hectares or seven and a half acres. Size does not, at least here, mean all good for Ordinata diversity, as no dragonflies were recorded over 10 visits. It is, however, great for damselflies, with on occasion significant numbers counted and way more observed. The five recorded species are clockwise from top left, common blue, emerald in the middle, azure, large red and blue-tailed damselflies. The pond also supports plenty of other insects, waterbirds and amphibians. It has, I think, previously been stocked with trout or other species for fishing, so this may possibly be a potential constraining issue for dragonflies. This is the low pond. I have recorded nine species as present here. This is the closest pond to the car park, the cafe and toilets, and the easiest of the two that have public access to find. It has a mix of open, fairly shallow water and a boggy area at the far end of the right-hand image. It is a fair bit smaller in width than the high pond, roughly 150 metres by 50 metres, covering approximately three quarters of a hectare or 1.85 acres. Most odonata seem to use the full length of the long edge alongside the field that catches the sun. This is flanked with a good mix of plants. Grazing livestock, when present in the field, and their dung, plus a patch of rough meadow by the River North Esk pathway, provides additional insects, and so food for Odonata, that can be found well away from the pond, taking advantage. Passing dogs love this pond for a swim, but when they are not present, there are often various ducks and other wildfowl to observe. All five damselfly species that were recorded on the high pond are also found here plus four dragonfly species, picture clockwise from top left, common hawker, four spotted chaser, common darter and black darter. Finally to the hurley pond, I have recorded eight species as present here. This is shallow and at least half of its area for much of the flying season is actually pretty overgrown bog or very marshy ground. Its dimensions are roughly 125 metres by 50 metres over approximately two thirds of a hectare or one and a half acres. It has public access, however, is not too regularly visited, as there is no formal path to reach it. Sometimes you need to avoid bulls in the field adjacent. This needs waders, or at least tall wellies, to really do any survey justice, and to avoid very wet feet. The pungent pond sediment gases also can be quite overpowering. This is all spoken from bitter experience. Most Odonata were again unsurprisingly found on the sunny end and side that is fringed with boggy ground, and lots of aquatic vegetation. One side is for much of the year fairly heavily shaded due to the steep contours and high mature beech trees. I recorded the same five damselfly species as noted at the other two ponds. I also recorded the same dragonfly species as at the low pond, less the four spotted chaser. This is an example of a full year's collected survey information, in this case from 2019. All visits are, of course, a fairly brief snapshot within a full day. Here are the dates of my visits and my summary results of species recorded over the 2018 to 2020 period. My full results are available on iRecord for all to view. These have the splits by date of visit, location, species and actual numbers counted. I also am very happy to email anyone the detailed Excel format base data if they're interested. Each year I was pleased I managed to incrementally find an additional species and over the three years, nine of the ten historically recorded species were confirmed as present, with a number observed mating or overpositing. However, one historic species, the pictured golden ring dragonfly, was not noted, probably, I suspect, due to my concentrating on pond habitats. So, what happens next? I've been asked by Danielle to take a look at various sites in South Lanarkshire, so at least in terms of site adoption, I now have to step aside here. It would be great if we can find a keen local surveyor to continue surveying the ponds and adding more data over future years. I'm in early discussion with Danielle about potentially arranging an ID training and engagement day, ideally involving the ranger service. 
it would be great to work with the BDS team and the estate to explore what could be done to further encourage Odonata and possibly improve the pond habitats. If I can convince Andrea and Danielle to consider Pennycook House Estate as a potential future dragonfly hotspot, that would be fantastic. When I can revisit the estate, it would be great to team up with an expert to have a detailed look for larvae or exuviae. I'm also very keen to look further afield and explore the large area of moorland and hopefully record the presence of the golden ring dragonfly. So, to wrap up, I would just like to thank all the folks noted on this slide. I would also like to encourage everyone not already doing so to have a go and adopt a site. If you're already there taking photos or even just walking the dog and in no rush, you just need to take a few notes. I promise, soon you will be hooked. It is very rewarding. You're adding to scientific knowledge and records, plus you never know, you may even find something new nobody else knew about has moved or flown into the area. Should you want to contact me, my email address and Twitter are on the slide. Thanks everyone for listening. I hope you found this of interest.